Now, Lieutenant Colonel Joseph, you have this big task preparing them, you know, for NDP. What are some of the key challenges involved? Try driving at a 400 nautical miles an hour, which is about 1,000 kilometers an hour, within three feet of each other with six aircraft, doing crisscrosses, upside down, trying to figure out where upside is up, left or right is up. These are the key challenges, not only being put on a physical body, the physical stress, the Gs, but also concentrating every single part of the way and as precise as possible in our placement of the maneuvers. After every flight, each and every one of us, our, our uniform, it, it's drenched. All right? It's like running a marathon. But mentally wise, you can feel the mental strain after that because of that immense concentration. Let's talk about the, uh, the chemistry and the cam camaraderie among the Black Knights team. I imagine you have to be close enough to sort of read each other's minds when you're in the air. They basically have to mind meld to have the same timings when they're launching the aircraft to put up a show on the ground. When we fly so close to each other, when our lives depend on each other, you have to have absolute trust. What sort of bonding session? Well, we do, do, like do go out with the families. Yeah. We do go out with the families, go for dinners. Uh, we have our barbecues down here. Do you have to play the bad guy sometimes? Do you actually have to pull their ears and say, look, you're not doing this right? Or do you, you know, I, I'm sure at times when you I'm very them. fortunate that I have the best of the best here. They are self-critical, so am I. I'm also very self-critical. Also walk us through some of the routines in your pre-flight check. Actually, the pre-flight checks is done firstly by the engineers to make sure that the aircraft is uh, in, of course, uh, the best shape available to fly. Besides the fact that the aircraft is not only uh, has to be serviceable, but actually in a pristine condition as you can see. Air crew-wise, um, we have to get ourselves into a mental state to ensure that we know exactly what we're supposed to do every flight. So the briefings, the preparations before the flight itself, it starts from there. And we debrief it after the flight as the ground footage comes back and we go through and scrutinise every single uh, manoeuvre that we do to make sure that it's done the right way. Now, obviously this is a very impressive aircraft. Yes. Can you just walk us through some of the cool aspects of it? I think the coolest thing on this aircraft is our state flag. Whenever we fly, we're flying our flag on our wings in the air. Besides the fact that this is an operational aircraft, we don't modify this aircraft for aerobatic usage. So at a moment's notice, this aircraft will be reconfigured for operational duties. This is actually a, uh, it's not a fuel tank, but it's actually a smoke tank. So that we can just down the tank, put up what we need on the aircraft, and it serves its duty as an operational aircraft. So a lot of people tend to say, you know, like the ground crew working on all these yeah. uh, pre-flight checks. It's a little bit like F1 where they have to make sure all the nuts and bolts are in place. So I'm wondering, is it also sort of similar? But when it comes to the number of bolts and nuts, I would guarantee that it's a lot more than in a car. So how sure long um, does, does, does a check like this typically take? Typically, it takes an hour prior to an hour and a half to ensure that the aircraft is safe for flight. And then subsequently, we will also have to do our own uh, pre-flight of the aircraft after we start up. Since it's SG-50, I'd expect there's a lot of pressure on you to actually wow the crowd. So what for you would be the best show? Actually, the best show is not graded by myself or the team. It's graded by you and everybody that watches us on the day itself. 